and we're back. Technical issues <laughs> aside, we're back for part two. Yes, yes, we are. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> That's right. But we got good stuff on the first section. Um, fun stuff on Instagram. So we're, we're you know, have been talking about <clears throat> the importance of, uh, of the, the dark side of history. Also, mm -hmm. the dark side of history, give it 100 years. It's usually the juiciest part of history anyway. So win-win. It's, it's what you really want to watch and read about. <laughs> it Most is. Because who, I know. I mean, and obviously no one wants to live through these events. Uh, but 100 years of separation, would you, would you rather read about a battle um, or about someone doing their laundry. Exactly. I mean, I hate laundry enough as it is, so. <laughs> yeah, we... <laughs> Same, I'm not a... I, I have things that must be folded soon. Uh... <laughs> it's about to expire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we'll just, we'll just leave it at that. Um, Your secret but... is safe. Okay. <laughs> I only I only tell my deepest secrets on Zoom calls on Facebook Live. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. <clears throat> so <laughs> dealing with this, um, you've come across uh, some really interesting information. We've talked in, in earlier iterations on Instagram and on part one, we we talked about the complexities of the Civil War and the sometimes pragmatic history, but then also the, the dark history that has come out of that. And yeah. one of those trails has led you and hopefully me soon to a cave in Joplin. Yes, um, and, and I've been there before, um, um, but um, it's the, well, the more cake word or name for it is the Belleville Cave. Um, it's more infamously known as the KKK cave, um, uh, mainly because later in the 1920s and so forth, it was used for meetings. Um, but in a lot of ways, the history uh, surrounding it during the Civil War period is, is probably darker. Um, it's, it's a natural cave and it was used basically as a bunker during the uh, Civil War. Um, Gatling guns were actually installed um, on the top of the hill above it. And you can, you can still see where the gun placements were. And wow. um, yeah, and it, you know, it, it speaks to the fact of it was very dangerous territory. Um, you were, uh, it was hotly contested uh, territory. Um, most of the people in the area nearby were Southern leaning. Many of the men were riding with the Confederate Rangers. Um, but it was also, a stone's throw from the uh, the Kansas territory line, or Kansas, yes. and um, with that, only a few more miles from uh, Union Garrison, yes. who repeatedly try uh, would foray into the area to provoke the uh, Confederates. So. Um, and various um, scorched earth policies, um, taking all the supplies from homes, intimidation. Um, mm -hmm. That was used on both sides, uh, to be honest. But you have uh, this cave that, and, and in, in this later incarnation that people get fixated on about it, uh, they lose sight of the fact that there is still a Civil War um, iron cage jail cell sitting there. That's dark. Dark. 
um, there's, I mean, there's, uh, they got them in groups now where, you know, they found shackles and uh, balls and chains and, and everything else. So it was, it was used to uh, house prisoners, even if it was not necessarily official. Yes. <laughs> and uh, there are tales of, of um, hauntings around it. People mm -hmm. see soldiers, etc. cetera. Um, and, and kind of like um, Wilson's Creek, uh, there's tales of, of a soldier on horseback riding through almost, all, almost um, like a sleepy hollow, almost uh, image, you know, uh, being about yeah. Um, from the Revolutionary War. So you have all of these things and then it it gets more of this car carnival kind of image because in the early 20th century it became a place for meetings for the KKK uh, mm -hmm. for parties. There's also a chandelier that hangs in the cave from <laughs> from the dances and the parties during prohibition. So, uh, you know, you, you run the gambit. Um, and- uh, it, is, it is a cornucopia of dark history. Yes, it, it, it really is. It, it really is. And, um, but um, to me, the, the Civil War connection is definitely the darkest and, um, and I think when you're being when we're being honest, says is a good illustration of what the the people on the ground, the people living here, what they were dealing with. Yeah, yeah, I I would agree. Now, my understanding is that the the cave is on private property. Is that correct? It is. It is, and. Um, more recently, in recent times, it was a it was a spook house, haunted house, um, and um, but it's it's all closed now. But I, I I've been there uh, years ago investigating everything. I think I sent you uh, some of the pictures. Yes. And um, yes. And I think the 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 image that still sits in my mind is seeing you know the balls and chain and the shackles you know, still laying there. <clears throat> yes, very much so. <clears throat> We're still there after all this time. It's <laughs> been taking us through an air to be perfectly honest. But. Yeah, it's, and apparently it's a quite large cave. It is, it is. Um, and it, it's part of a larger cave system. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I just always find it interesting that when when it the subject of it comes up these days, it's always brought up in connection with KKK, and yes. most people aren't really aware of the other history. Right. <clears throat> it's of course the the clan became you know was was part of the the lost cause, um, sort of vigilante response. Right, you know, to to a large degree, in the sense that in the wake of the war, uh, traditional structures of law and order had largely been wiped out. Yes, and and I think in its in its first iteration, um, you know, an antebellum pro slavery leanings aside, you can you can read a lot of pragmatism into that first iteration. Uh, well, I think, I think a lot certainly told themselves that, um, uh, but I mean, it, it really, it, that first wave, it really was based on voter suppression and, and, and mm -hmm. things like that, uh, but it had been pretty well stamped out, um, during, um, uh, the Grant presidency when Congress, uh, authorized them to send troops in and, yeah. uh, so it, it really, you know, it really kind of fell out of favor, um, wasn't as popular, and it had a resurgence in 
around World War One. Yes, and then and, and a resurgence. Uh, and then kind say, of a about six years later. Yes, uh, a resurgence that really, for a short, a brief period of time, comparatively speaking, um, a, a resurgence that really extended far beyond the Deep South. Yes, it did, and 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 unfortunately, you know, there 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 were uh, hangings and lynchings and things that happened uh, all in the Ozarks, um, and. Um, in, in the early 1900s and um, mm -hmm. in different places. Um, but the flip side of that dark history is, uh, and it gets away from the cause, you know, the, the so-called causes there, but um, that it, it, lynching became, well, I don't wanna say accepted, but it happened more often than it does now, or it had before even. Um, and, it, and it wasn't always racially motivated, which is mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, something that most people don't think about. Um, in 1919, um, there was a uh, lynching of a, uh, a white man in Lamar, Missouri. Um, and he had been, um, convicted of, of murdering sheriff and um, it became apparent that um, the uh, the lynching was pre-planned mm. and so but you just you you had you have to look at that and, and so many people would say well that doesn't fit that broader pattern of, that you know we learn about but to be perfectly honest, there, there, there was a, a range of time in there where sort of that mob mentality of we're, we're, going, to, we're going to be vigilantes and, and get what we want um, seemed to spring up occasionally. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and I think... Yeah. I think if you really look at it, probably the seeds of that were, were in the Civil War. Mm. <clears throat> Even though it was 40 years it's... earlier. I mean, it. Uh, yeah. Those were the times that when, you know, it, it, in, in, that, in those desperate times when people overstepped their, nor their normal bounds. Yes. <clears throat> very much so and, and coming back and I, and I want to be very clear that everything that I'm saying is not um, it, it is not a statement of excuse for what these people did yeah, no. um, I when I'm talking about the pragmatism I'm talking about the importance of <clears throat> us as 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 here in 2021 21 whatever the heck year it is i have no <laughs> idea anymore um that it's very easy for us <clears throat> to look to our our past uh you know our, our ancestors decisions and very easily condemn them without adding context uh oftentimes missing that we in a similar situation without an appreciation of the past could easily make the same decision I, th I think it's one of one of the more sobering realities of the importance of of understanding our history because we can use it to triangulate our position. Uh, a situation where we might be in you know a modern day situation facing trouble sometimes, and be able to look back at where our ancestors may have taken a wrong step, and. Mm -hmm then said okay we can learn from this experience because of these similarities let's not make that same mistake again exactly. so nothing that i'm i'm about to say so my disclaimer on this is that i am not making excuses for vigilante or mob action i i do condemn right. both of those uh, <clears throat> but the importance of putting yourself into that situation 
understanding the context around it and understanding that in some cases, it was from their perspective, the pragmatic choice. Right. And I, I do think it's, um, it is kind of interesting that um, whereas the KKK, you know, they kind of went through a couple of cycles, but typically would get denounced, at least in this part of the country, um, uh, fairly quickly um, when they, there was a resurgence. Um, and it's not glamorized. Now, I guess the flip side, I guess the segue is um, when people look at the, um, the bald knobbers, mm -hmm. sometimes <clears throat> it, it gets glamorized. True, true. I, I, I would agree with that. Um, and and <laughs> there's... The, or something else that happens, it, which is not un, terribly uncommon, is that the ball numbers get uh, mistaken as being somehow part of the clan. That's true, and I and I and I think that of course the probably is just the use of a hood, even though not the same style of hood. Um, yes, I, I I would tend to agree. Um, we. we we, we are creatures that uh, find patterns and associations. So um, it's easy for yes. humans to this do is, that. This is, this is, I, I, I want to I take a brief aside and ask a question because I don't have the answer to this. <laughs> and you think I do? I, <laughs> I, I'm just going to throw it out there. Um, the, um, the 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 ritual pointed hoods popularized mm -hmm. by the kkk are nearly identical <coughs> to a, a a ritual hood uh used in um in, in religious pageantry in the the south of spain in for Catholic as part of Catholicism. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've seen that. Uh, mm -hmm. It is <laughs> uh, marching in a candlelit uh, assembly down the, the ancient streets of Seville uh, mm -hmm. during, during a, a, a Christmas pageant of all things the week after Thanksgiving. Um, it is, for someone of my sensibilities, is one of the most unsettling sights and uh and of course you know this is unrelated I i'm have oftentimes wondered in actuality and i've i've seen some sort of mm, uh attempts i would say to to explain the origin the origin of the hood uh, because it's very specific uh, much yeah. more specific than the bald numbers. The bald numbers response was very pragmatic. Taney County bald numbers, it was usually a pillowcase or a flower sack. And then for the mm -hmm. Christian County bald numbers, it was a, an augmentation of that to appear more devilish, to be frightening. Yeah. I'm, I'm at a loss where, where the, the pointy hoods came from. I, I mean, and I don't know for sure. I, I don't. Um, although the unspoken evocation of, of, a, of religion it may, may not have been unintentional. I mean, it, True. That, that, that sense of, of um, being sanctioned, I guess, um, and uh, authority, I don't know. Yes. Uh, would be my guess, but I don't know for sure. But it it wouldn't. I would not necessarily be surprised by that. True. If, if there was a deliberate reference. Deliberate crossover. The 
a, a fi final point I think for me on on the 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 clan and, and more specifically the 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 conflation of the clan with the bald numbers. Um, interesting that there, there are the similarities, not the similarities in ideology. No, but I think but no, the, the it, similarities, the the similarities in this is a a response taken in within the historical and social context uh, of the lawlessness after the ravages of the Civil War. Um, yes, I mean, of course, with the Klan, they, uh, in many cases, they they were creating the lawlessness, <laughs> um, whereas the the ball knobbers, um were um, attempting to fill a void of the lack of law enforcement. Yes, and and that and the other thing that I think is interesting, <coughs> the original the original Taney County ball knobbers um would have would have pulled um fairly heavily toward um sympathizing with the union yes yes and it, it certainly it certainly was not um racially motivated um no not at all very much the opposite and and in fact i think there's there's a popular assumption that the bald knobbers probably were um, disaffected former Confederates, but that wasn't the case. No, no. If, if anything, um, the, the, the groups formed in response against the bald numbers would have been more likely, but not necessarily Confederates. Right. No, that right. Um, at that point, it, it became more a matter of who, who's going to be a vigilante and who's going to be who's going to impose control yes and and, and you know the 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 bald number story which i find really fascinating uh across the across the the spectrum i i think one of the things that i do find fascinating is that it, that it presents this this wide this wide gamut of human complexity of mm -hmm. who's against whom and why and shifting allegiances, um, uh, a situation where the, the very early onset of the bald knobbers were, were made up, as we said, of, of uh, union, largely union sympathizing um, or, or US government sympathizing uh, individual men <clears throat> who to a large degree were uh, were very respected leaders in the community who felt that that because of the lack of uh, of law and order that they were they and their families and their businesses um, and their their towns were unsafe and no one else seemed to be rising to the occasion so they chose to but as the uh, the vigilante um, gang uh, violence began to take root, and then also as uh, as law and order began to be developed, and the bald numbers then continued. So many of those founding members of the bald numbers stepped away and ultimately condemned the bald numbers. True. I mean, I mean, in some ways, um, you can't you can draw parallels to the bald numbers. And what happened in a lot of the western towns and the cow towns and uh the lincoln county war uh things like that uh, because you had a lot of times um just lawlessness uh and in uh particularly the lincoln county war where uh pat garrett and billy the kid became infamous uh you did have vigilanteism uh involved um but it, it really, I mean, it's, it's, it's sort of a mirror image um, of some of those dynamics that happened out West. And uh, although ironically, the ball numbers happened about the same time, a lot of those 
same struggles we're having in Dodge City or Tombstone and so forth and so on. Um, yes. And it just, it, it manifested itself differently, but um, really the same kind of uh, processes and, and uh, motivations. Yeah. Yeah. And you know? it, I, I think <clears throat> uh, something that I just keep coming back to is the importance of looking at contextual pragmatism before condemning our ancestors to their decisions. I agree. And it's, you know, it's, you know, um, it's, it's hard. It, it really is hard to stand, you know, kind of stand in the shoes of, of someone in those situations um, from our own perspectives. But by the same token, someone 150 years from now, maybe this doing the same thing about things that are happening now. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And so uh, I think it is sort of an inter uh, eternal um, human process and struggle that we go through. Um, mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I, I always am wary when uh, people want to sanitize <clears throat> the path or uh, not look too closely. And, and I know people are really feeling like that's happening now, but it, it, it's happened throughout history. I mean, it, it happened in ancient mm -hmm. Greece. It happened, in, you know, the Middle Ages. It happens now. It does. And <clears throat> equally, I, I think, as a point counterpoint, but in the same vein, uh, also at times sanitizing history, at other times choosing various characters from our past and then vilifying them. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, I mean, and, and there's certainly examples, maybe very sort of prominent world history example would probably be Napoleon. I mean, um, mm -hmm. uh, served a certain role for, for the British, um, but um, not necessarily entirely, <laughs> entirely uh, based in reality. <laughs> right. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, and you know, <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly enough, and it, and it, and it, of course, this is neither here nor there, but if you think about it, had, <clears throat> uh, had Napoleon um, uh, not, <laughs> well, you could potentially argue that had, um, uh, had France not descended into anarchy in 1790 with the revolution, um, that later pushed the pendulum in the, the French people's response from, from sheer anarchy to sheer tyranny under Napoleon, then had Napoleon not marched across continental Europe, causing the untold suffering of millions, uh, that, that 80 plus thousand uh, Germans would not have ended up immigrating into the northern Missouri Ozarks in the 1830s, and uh, <laughs> uh, of course, uh, the war in Missouri could have been very different without those uh, without those German regiments. But yeah. additionally, we would not have um, well. First of all, and perhaps most importantly, we would not have ooey gooey butter cake. Uh, <laughs> fair, and, fair. <laughs> and uh, we would also not have the the incredibly beautiful. Uh, historic town of Herman, Missouri, on the Missouri River. Very true. Very true. Um, <laughs> so, so I, I, I guess somehow Napoleon does play a factor in, into <laughs> into our discussion of those. Uh, unintentionally. So when you, <laughs> yeah, very unintentionally. So when you go to go to Herman and you're enjoying the wineries um, and the and the bratwurst and the, just the incredibly beautiful scenery, and you go down into uh, the, 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 the stone cellar that I'm convinced has buttery sprites at this point. I originally thought it was haunted, but now I'm convinced it's buttery sprites. Um, you know, uh, 
uh, you know, think of Napoleon and sadly, probably also the Marquis de Sade. Uh, <laughs> and a few other horrible people from our history. <laughs> well, I had not expected that to go there. <laughs> Just thinking of um, uh, variantly abhorrent people from our European past. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> that now we owe a beautiful winery to. There you go. Oh, and <laughs> oh, well, and and why not? Also, if you're not in the mood for winery, go to go to Freistadt, October, and enjoy some some beer for Oktoberfest. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I do. I do love Oktoberfest. <laughs> that uh, and I do think <clears throat> you know it's it's a bit it may be just a smidge existential but I think that studying these sorts of things is, is incredibly important uh, because it's without it you can really get your blinders on and get very very upset uh, about what's going on at any given moment mm -hmm. and and the reality is that oftentimes what's going on at a given moment is really horrifying as it has always been. Yeah. Um, yes. But the ebb and you know, flow. The, yes. Um, you know, my, my first um, lengthy, um, you know, lengthy studies of Irish history was very enlightening to me because so much of Irish history has been marked by truly horrifying events. Did I freeze on you? It, for, for a minute, but. Okay, good, uh, but we're back. Um, so much of Irish history is such a beautiful land and an incredible culture. And, you know, it's, it's also a history that has been marked by truly horrifying events and, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> one simply one of the standouts being uh the potato famine of the 1840s but that being one of many um yeah. and, and and realizing that out of the horror out of the heartbreak out of out of the terrible suffering um that somehow we're still here mm -hmm. uh the culture is still here um uh, that that there are, that there are, are moments of great beauty and of course great pathos as well uh and great moment in, in you know last october <clears throat> for example i i still you know we we had the ravages of the napoleonic wars and the prussian wars uh and then you know so so many years later as a result of that, in, in October, I find myself sitting on a patio in, in, in Herman, Missouri, watching the, the river flow by, surrounded by great people eating bratwurst and, you know, drinking. And incredibly <laughs> beautiful, you know, there, there is a great deal of beauty and comfort that, that is also part of this world. Very true. Very, very true. I agree. <laughs> and perhaps on that contemplative note, we... We shall say adieu uh, and uh, be back next Wednesday. Yes. And um, I guess as a little teaser, we, we will. One thing we'll discuss next week is a, a new book being released uh, by local authors uh, about yes. some of the uh, noir uh, history and ghost tales of the Ozarks. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to that. I am too. I am too. I <laughs> I uh I purchased it and now I have to read it before next Wednesday. <laughs> it's gonna be good. It's gonna be yeah. fun. We work well under pressure. Yes. <laughs> it's the, it seems to be the only way I do work. So I same. <laughs> so we thank everybody. Uh -oh. and if you if you have things that you are interested in, let us know. Uh, ask questions, and we'll do our best to answer. Absolutely, and buy a dark Ozarks T-shirt off Amazon from Savage Gear. Yeah, yes, appreciate. <laughs> <laughs>
yes, yes, we do. Uh, so I appreciate you, Lisa, and of course appreciate Benton uh, for all of his tech work. Oh, definitely. Uh, he's done a great job, and I appreciate you, Josh. And uh, thank you, everyone. Just have a great week. Absolutely. Be safe. Stay cool. Night, all. Night.